hello once again, Bill Pfeiffer speaking uh, from Mary's Field. Uh, yesterday on my wife's uh, uh, cell phone, this uh, bit of news uh, came up and I just thought I, I have to just uh, share it that uh, a team of uh, researchers in Australia at the Federation University of Australia found that there is no connection between the relationship boys have with their father as they grow up and their adherence to masculine norms later on in life. Is there anyone on the planet who believes that? You know, these researchers should be put on a dune buggy and go out and force to count kangaroos or sheep or something or other. That's just absolutely preposterous. Remember 9-11, uh, the uh, families that lost uh, men, male fire, firemen or, or policemen, uh, the, uh, the, the male uh, departments came and, and acted as a, uh, as a male influence in the lives of the boys and girls that were left behind during that tragedy. Uh, it, it's natural. We've been doing this since the, the earth has been planted by human beings. And, uh, you know, unbelievable that somebody should come up with a thing like this. I'd like to continue what we were doing yesterday. I mentioned to you that I dealt with the 16, 17, 18 year olders in school who all insisted that they were adults and that they uh, uh, wanted to be treated like adults. So I every once in a while shared them some things that uh, made them think like adults and have them act a little bit better in the halls or in the cafeteria or in the bus on their way home. Um, and to continue. I've learned that sometimes the people you expect to kick you when you're down will be the ones to help you to get back up. I've learned that sometimes when I'm angry, I have the right to be angry, but that doesn't give me the right to be cruel. I've learned that once you have lost a person's trust and respect, it takes real time to re-earn their trust and respect. The kids want it back right away. You don't trust me. You have to become trustworthy. You have to become respectable. Huh? I've learned that just because someone doesn't love you the way you want them to, want them to doesn't mean that you don't, they don't love you with all that they have. I've learned that maturity has more to do with what types of experiences you've had and what you've learned from them and less to do with how many birthdays you've celebrated. I've learned that your family won't always be there for you. It may seem funny, but people you aren't related to can take care of you and love you and teach you to trust people again. I've learned that no matter how good a friend is, they're going to hurt you every once in a while, and you must forgive them for that. I've learned that it is always enough to be uh, to, to, it is isn't always enough to be forgiven by others. Sometimes you are to learn to forgive yourself. I've learned that our background and circumstances may have influenced who we are, but we are responsible for who we become. I've learned that just because two people argue, it doesn't mean they don't love each other, and just because they don't argue, it doesn't mean they do. I've learned that we don't have to change friends if we understand that friends change. I've learned that you shouldn't be so eager to find out a secret. It could change your life forever. I've learned that two people can look at the exact same thing and see something totally different and both be either correct or wrong. I've learned that no matter how you try to protect your children, they will eventually get hurt and will hurt you in the process. I've learned that your life can be changed in a matter of hours by people who don't even know you. I've learned that even when you think you have no more to give, when a friend cries out to you, you will find the strength to help. I've learned that credentials on the wall, PhDs do not make a decent human being. I've learned that people you care about most in life are taken from you too soon. And finally, I've learned that we should hold on to the ones who really care, because in the end, they'll be the only ones there. Some good thoughts for your heart. Good to reflect on. Again, I'd like to continue with the, the novena the third day. Uh, of, of the nine days. Again, we're not dealing you know, using this as superstition. It's not magic. It depends on your honest prayer, your honest heart, and uh, and uh, that's it's, it's got to be something that comes from your heart, or it really ends up being worth nothing. Uh, day three says, and I uh, again some really nice things and uh, good, just good stuff. How many things I do, says Jesus, when the soul in so much spiritual and material need turns to me, looks at me, and says to me, you take care of it, then close its eyes and rest. 
In pain you pray for me to act, but that I act in the way that you want. You do not turn to me. Instead, you want me to adapt to your ideas. You are not sick people who ask the doctor to cure you, but rather sick people who tell the doctor how to. So do not act this way, but pray as I taught you in the hour, Father, hallowed be thy name, that is, be glorified in my need, thy kingdom come. That is, let all that is in us and in the world be in accord with your kingdom. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that is, in our need, decide as you see fit for our temporal and eternal life. Finally, if you say to me truly, thy will be done, which is the same as saying, you take care of it. I will intervene with all my omnipotence, and I will resolve the most difficult situations. Again, then, ten times, if you will, Jesus, I surrender myself completely to you. Take care of everything. Jesus, I surrender to you. Take care of everything. It's a matter of surrender, isn't it? Dante said in his uh, in Divine Comedy, in his will is our peace. And that's really the truth. And in his will, you can depend on it to be able to take care of all of the things that you need to have cared for in your life. Know that we love you. Happiness tomorrow always, always truly does depend on doing the truth today. Good to be with you. Bye-bye.